and welcome to today's episode of Daily Musings. I'm Alicia, and we're going to totally shift gears from the election-related posts that I've been doing over the last couple days and get back into emotional well-being, the um, the right side of things as opposed to the like the right brain side of things. Today's video is about um, a formula that I try to keep in my head, which is suffering is pain times resistance. It's a, it comes from a meditation teacher named Shinzen Young. And I want to quote, uh, I'll start this off with a quote, not, it's a, not a direct quote, but basically just uh, his philosophy is that the key to happiness is understanding that suffering is caused by resisting pain. So suffering is not pain itself. It's resisting that pain. Um, we can avoid, or sorry, we definitely cannot avoid pain in life. Um, but we don't necessarily have to suffer because of that pain, because, uh, if suffering is in resistance, if it's in, so let's, let's say for example, that, um, my friend stood me up for a dinner date. Has that even ever happened? But let's pretend that's what happened. Um, in that moment, I'm like sitting at the chair and I'm like, where's my friend? I'm so mad. Um, or I'm feeling sad. I'm feeling the sting of rejection. It's a painful experience. But if I want to pile suffering on top of that, it's by, um, I'm going to spin a narrative about it. Um, this always happens to me. Why does, you know, bad things are always happening to, to me in life. And why did my friend do this? They're so careless and rude. Um, uh, they didn't consider my feelings. Um, and I just get into this, I just spin a web around it instead of actually accepting reality for how it is instead of saying, okay, well, it looks like my friend stood me up and I'm feeling sad and my heart is stung. It's stinging a little bit and I'm sitting here. Well, um, you know, what can I do? Can I sit here and um, feel all of the, you know, just shake my fist at life or maybe I'll just order some food and maybe I'll just like read a book and have some time by myself and uh, just accept the situation as opposed to rejecting it by uh, shaking my fist at it in some way. Anyway, I kind of went off on a little tangent there, but that's the idea behind um, suffering equals pain times resistance. So something I've been keeping in my head a lot as um, like many people, <laughs> probably everyone, I tend to reject things that make me feel bad. So if I'm feeling um, like sad about something, instead of just accepting the feeling of that moment, so the feeling of that sadness, I try to reject it. I try to push it away. I try to spin a story around that and all of that. Um, it, what it actually reminds me of. So maybe this is a weird comparison, but um, this is something that you can try if you live in a cold climate. Um, or you can do this with ice. And I saw an exercise like this in the self-compassion book I've been reading by Chris, Kristen Neff. Um, but what I've noticed, so I live in a really cold climate and in the winter, what'll happen is you'll go outside, you can be well-dressed, but if it's minus 30, you're still going to be shivering and you get that like kind of vibrating feeling where you're shivering. You know, maybe I'm in my car and my car hasn't warmed up yet and I'm driving and I'm just shivering. Uh, in some sense, that's a type of resistance because what I found is that if I tell myself, okay, it's cold, just accept it. Just accept the cold, Alicia, accept the cold. Um, I stop shivering. It's weird. It's like by taking a, a moment of mindfulness and just like, instead of, um, oh, it's so cold. I hate that it's cold. It's stupid that it's cold. Like, why do I live here? And rejecting the cold, I'm just saying, okay, it's cold. It is what it is. I can't do anything about it. I'm just going to accept it. I can weirdly go from um, shivering to, to not shivering at all. It's The coldness hasn't changed. The pain of the cold has not changed at all. But the only thing that's changed is I'm just accepting it versus rejecting it. So I've had that experience happen, and I think it's relevant here because it's... Um, it's nothing. It's it's just a physical example. It's nothing to do with emotional pain or anything like that. But I think the the idea there is the same. So you could try this for yourself with ice, where if you hold an ice cube um, with intention, um, with saying, "Okay, I'm just gonna accept." the cold, I'm just gonna accept the pain. You'll be able to hold on to that ice cube longer than if you were like, pain sucks, I hate this, this is the worst feeling, I don't want this feeling. Um, so it's just kind of an interesting thing about our brains. One real world example of this is with emails or other work that I find difficult and uncomfortable. So I probably spend more time resisting the work of answering emails than I do actually just accepting and doing the work. And I spend more time avoiding it or um, letting it weigh heavily on my mind, um, as opposed to actually just being like, you know what, emails are a part of having an online business. It's just a part of life. It's better to just hunker down and do them. I think the reason I get so resistant to emails, I've talked about emails on this channel a lot, so I won't go too much. It's just because of the volume of them. I have a lot of emails to process and a lot of um, 
things that uh, require help. So not just emails that I read passively, but someone has a question, someone has an issue, a problem, um, something that I need to solve. The vast majority of my emails are positive, but I do have resistance about what if there's a negative email? Um, what if uh, someone has something that's uh, gonna hurt my feelings or I'll allow my feelings to be hurt? So those are the reasons that I tend to resist it, but it causes me way less pain if I just say, okay, you know what? Every day I'm gonna set aside about 15 to 30 minutes to just blast through some emails and I, um, I'm not gonna resist the experience. Then I actually don't mind doing emails at all. I find when I'm in the moment, um, when I'm reading what people have to say, it's actually a door to connecting. And I really quite like that. Um, to connect with other people um, and just, uh, yeah, not be totally all alone. So it is nice, but I do resist it. So I feel like most of the pain of doing a task that I don't particularly love, answering email, um, can be, most of the suffering can be changed simply by not resisting the task or rejecting the fact that I have to do it. Because I can say, oh, why do I have to answer emails? Life is so unfair. Um, and that's not gonna, that's gonna cause the suffering, is that that narrative of life is so unfair, why me? Uh, so I could just accept it and then the suffering kind of goes away. Maybe it's still a little painful to do emails, but I don't suffer as an example, as a very maybe mundane example. Another example is with, with parenting. So I find myself thinking a lot, I notice my reactions. So when I have negative reactions to my child's negative reactions, if she's having a tantrum, I find, or you know, there's some other kind of conflict that comes up. I find myself thinking thoughts like, she shouldn't be doing that. Like she shouldn't be upset about this. She shouldn't be demanding. She should be more polite. It's these shoulds. It's like I, I'm holding her to these expectations, which of course, um, I'm not gonna like, you know, I don't wanna be like one of those super permissive chaotic parents, but this should narrative um, causes me a lot of pain because as soon as I'm thinking um, she should behave in a different way, that's when I tend to react with a hot temper. That's when I tend to say things that I regret. That's when I tend to um, just be more combative instead of stepping back a little bit from an angle of compassion. And that compassion encompasses the fact that kids are gonna sometimes do things that I like and sometimes they're gonna do things that I don't like. And uh, it's essentially their function in life to push buttons, to explore, to um, test the boundaries of your love. and. Um, of what's acceptable behavior or not, they're learning how to do that. So by widening my scope to accept that, the kids will sometimes behave in a way I don't like, um, all of a sudden the shoulds melt away a little bit. Because if I'm thinking she should be sitting still, then I'm thinking, okay, but also she's three. So I can't expect her to sit still every single time. And generally she's pretty good at the dinner table. So this isn't gonna be like a major problem. It's the shoulds that, that cause me suffering and make me feel pain because I'm thinking, oh, she should behave in this way. All of a sudden I start thinking about um, how it, it's, it reflects on my own parenting. If I'm out in public and uh, my kid's acting kind of like antsy at the restaurant table or something, it makes me feel, oh, she should be acting in a different way. Um, people are gonna judge me as a parent. And all of that, this is just like all imagined. Like this is, these are things that um, are happening internally. They're not, things are actually happening. It's not accepting reality. The reality is I have a jittery kid. Maybe people are judging me, maybe they aren't. They probably aren't. Um, and uh, just dealing with that situation as it is, okay, I have a jittery three-year-old, it's fine, um, is a lot better than uh, turning it into this big complicated thing, um, which just makes you, it makes you feel heavy and weighed down and uh, it's not fun. Now I have a final quote to share with you on my little legal pad paper, but I did not write down the source. Um, so uh, sorry about that. It might be, Kristen Neff, but I'm not 100% sure on that. But either way, it's beautiful, so I'll share it with you. And we'll wrap up this video. You know quite well, deep within you, that there is only a single magic, a single power, a single salvation, and that is called loving. Well then, love your suffering. Don't resist it. Don't flee from it. It's your aversion that hurts, nothing else. Thank you so much for joining me, and I'll catch you in the next one.